in pretty much all of your other work, you've basically assumed that a firm is out to maximize profit. Um, this particular video is looking at other potential objectives of firms. Well, your first question might be, why might firms choose not to profit maximize? Well, that picture of the village post office in the middle there might give you some sort of idea. Uh, the people that run it, they're going to be old, they're going to be centres of the social hub within the village. They're not your money grabbing capitalists that we normally think of when we think of profit maximisers. Maybe their aim is just to have a decent life, to meet some people. Uh, so possibly their objective might be to um, simply satisfy rather than profit maximise. Probably that they're doing OK, they'll be happy. On the other hand, that person on the right hand side is your money grabbing uh, person. So maybe they might be out to pursue one of their personal objectives if they're in charge of the company. Uh, that goes down often to the divorce of ownership and control. The people that are in charge of the companies are not the same people that run the companies, which is also known as the principal agent problem. Which leads us on to the question of why uh, are economists interested in the principal agent problem? Well, when the theory of the firm was first developed over 100 years ago by people like Alfred Marshall, there wasn't a problem. Primarily, most businesses uh, were run by the owner. Uh, imagine sort of your Victorian factory. The owner is going to be uh, wandering around the factory, making sure that the workers were working hard, making sure that all was running efficiently because it was their money that was at risk. So the owner is the manager. So therefore, they'd be likely to go for profit maximization. Now, on the right hand side of the screen, you can see what the situation typically is for large companies. Now, um, you're looking at the major shareholders of Tesco and you can see that the largest shareholder is an American corporation. Uh, the second largest is Norge Bank and the third largest is Schroeder. So typically these companies are owned by other companies, other finance houses, um, etc. Plus lots and lots and lots of small shareholders. Now, if you look at those three shareholders combined, the three biggest at Tesco together, they have only about 14 percent of the shareholding. In other words, they don't hold 86 percent of the shareholding. And that is pretty typical. So they don't have day to day control over the business. That is in the hands of salaried managers, executives who could be with the company for a couple of years and then uh, be with another completely different company. And you can see in that uh, slide where it says the FTSE 100 offenders, you can see how much money these people could potentially make. Um, 31 million, um, 3.6 uh, 3 million, 1.1 million. They can make huge money. Um, and potentially that could be at the expense of profit. So maybe they're feathering their own nest because it's in their interests to do that. It might be in the interests of shareholders to maximize profits, but it might not be in the interest of, uh, of managers for, uh, to maximize profits. So they might be pursuing their own objectives. These are just examples of where there's been a shareholder revolt. And often, even though the shareholders revolt, in other words, they vote against these huge salaries, they might not get their own way. So economists like William Balmol down there on the bottom right, died out only a few years ago. He started to think, well, OK, what if these managers are able to pursue their managerial objectives? What might they be? Well, possibly it, they might be able to maximise their revenue. Lots of people in business are paid on commission. Commission is based on sales value not profit. They might be out to maximize their sales to become number one. You know, think about how you become number one in the music industry. You sell more physical copies than other people. Same with books. They might be out like perhaps those people in the middle who have been subject to those revolts to maximize their personal income rather than shareholders income or boost their ego or maybe they might be going for recognition. Um, good example of that would be someone like Roman Abramovich at Chelsea had lost a billion pounds on Chelsea. He's perfectly happy uh, with that, provided that Chelsea win those trophies. So not profits, but trophies could be important for them. Or again, they could just be out of satisfice to not get on anyone's nerves, but to not to maximise uh, the shareholders profit. So what role does profit play? 
Well, firms can't make losses. They cannot make supernormal losses because they'll go out of business. Or alternatively, at that point, by definition, the shareholders uh, will be unhappy with the company and they may well vote the managers uh, out. So um, a supernormal profit level of zero is the minimum profit that the firm can make. So, so the managers can't do what, whatever they want, but to a large extent they can, provided that they do not make a loss. Let's go through some of these objectives in turn. First of all, let's look at the revenue maximizer, the manager who perhaps gets paid on the basis of commission or revenue. Um, so they wanna be in revenue terms, the largest company maybe. Tesco are the biggest supermarket, not because they have the largest share value, but because they generate the most revenue. So if you work your way down the total revenue column, you can see the highest figure is uh, 408 pounds at an output of 12. You'll notice in this particular case, the firm is making a loss, so they couldn't actually do that, but let's not uh, worry about that until later. So what is happening round about the output of 12? You'll notice I haven't bothered to put on the marginal cost or the average cost curve because revenue max only looks at revenues. Literally, the costs don't matter. Well, right about that output of 12, you can see that the marginal revenue curve is pretty close to cutting that zero. So the conditions for revenue max are marginal revenue equals zero. So what about the sales maximizer? Well, the sales maximizer would typically be in a sort of business where success is shown by the number of units you sell, for example, selling records, selling books, that sort of thing. Remember, this firm cannot make a loss. So on this particular case, we need to look down the profit column and find the point at which the firm is not making a loss. Well, if you look down there, you can see that at an output of 10, they're making a profit of 30. But if they make 11, they're making a loss of 13. So we're looking at what is going on between 10 and 11. Well, between 10 and 11, you can see that the AR curve, the average revenue the demand curve, is cutting the AC curve. Now, logically, that makes sense. If profit is the difference between revenue and cost, and we are not making a profit at all, not making a super normal profit at all, then it implies that the cost equals the revenue. So the conditions for sales maximization are average revenue equals average cost. Typically on a question, you are asked to compare the position of a profit maximizer with one of the other objectives. So we need to start with the profit maximizing quantity and price. The conditions for profit maximization are marginal cost equals marginal revenue. Remember, we get the price from the demand curve, the average revenue curve. If we're asked to compare with revenue max, you can see that the conditions for revenue max, MR equals naught. Again, to find the price, you follow that up to the uh, demand curve, and you can see that the revenue maximizer will sell a higher quantity at a lower price than the profit maximizer. Again, if we compare the sales maximizer with the profit maximizer, we're looking for the sales max condition, which is where AR equals AC. And again, the price is actually straightforward to pick up from that. No one ever makes mistakes with that. And again, you can see that the sales maximizer sells a higher quantity and at a lower price than the profit maximizer. So in every single case, the profit maximizer is selling at the highest price, which is one of the reasons why governments don't necessarily uh, like um, profit maximizers and they might want to curb the powers of large firms who are able to exploit profits in that way. So those are the three conditions that you need to learn. Profit max, MR equals MC. Revenue max, MR equals null. Sales max, AR equals AC. So learn them.